Paul, what's the latest on injuries and illness? Anybody back that missed out on Bristol City? There's a few lads trained this morning. Uh, Matty Pennington trained, Flynn, Flynn trained, James trained, uh, Dean Gherkin back trained. So the illness and injuries are, are, are certainly getting better. So uh, yeah, up until now we, we see that tomorrow. And no new problems to deal with? Um, no, not not for the other day. Uh, one or two little tired legs and kind of uh, stiffness and things like that, but that'll, that'll be away. How has Will Keane progressed? Have you got a game in mind yet for him? No, he's still, still obviously, Will's, Will's a good wee bit away. He's, um, I think the national break will help him, M missing the two weeks, and obviously he misses a whole game anyway. But we'll see how he is uh, after that. Where's Jordan Spence, and you think? And he was a regular starter when you first arrived. Yeah. We haven't seen him for a little while. No, that's true. One, I'm picking the team, and two, the former other guys as well. But Jordan trains well. He doesn't doesn't know train well, so I don't have a problem that way. It's just, you've just got to battle back to, to get back in the side, really. And in terms of Emir Hughes, who we haven't seen for a long time, mm. is it getting close to maybe writing off this season and just thinking about next year with a full pre-season behind them? No, Emir, Emir trained. He trained this morning as well, so you've got to remember that. You just can't throw somebody's brain. I know I put him on the bench against Rotherham, but you just can't throw him in. You've got to watch that, that he doesn't break down again. It's a bigger picture that he can't break down again, so we just kind of nurture him through it. How much does the last two performances against two very good sides when you could, could have possibly got all six points really increase belief you can be successful uh, long term next season for mm. argument's sake? It, I can say about a few games that we should have took maximum points. I think the last two games that because we played that well and the way it's happened. If we came away with six points I don't think anybody would have flinched really. But there's been certain games where I thought like, how we've drew it let alone lose it. Uh, lose it. So I think that's important is, is to keep this momentum or the way they're playing, albeit we have to try and get the, the wins. So, uh, but the performance wise have been really, really high. And all these kids coming through, is this as good a group as you've worked with in your time in management, do you think? Numbers wise, and everybody come through the, through the same time, I would, I would say, yeah, I think that's uh, the, You've seen it yourself how well they're playing. I think they're, they're getting well and truly complimented, which you should. But there shouldn't be any pressure on them because it's, it's no. They haven't arrived or anything like that. They've got a lot of hard work to go, and, uh, but they're on the right path and if they keep listening, as I said after the game, if they keep listening and working hard, then they've got a chance, but they, they have to keep the hard work because you'll get nothing without hard work. Is Corey the next one to make his debut? Would you like to get some league minutes into him? He's travelled to the last two games, hasn't he? He's involved anyway. Corey, Corey's been training with us because I think uh, he's a left foot or centre half, which are, which are gold dust for you, a left foot or centre half. And I know the club had a couple here and let them go, which I don't think was was the right thing to do. It. And uh, I think Corey's got a chance. I think Tristan's got a chance. Wilfordin's got to come back. So, as I said before, there's a, a right good handful of players that that could come back and, and make an impact. But whatever league you're in. And when you're playing these kids and maybe a few more towards the end of the season, do you also have to think of the integrity of the championship and how other clubs might view it? For all you're looking at Ipswich Town, for arguments that you play a weekend side, or some kids at Bramall Lane, Norwich and, and Leeds might have that, that kind of thing. Does that come into your thinking? No, because all, all other teams nothing. I don't know them anything. Well, that's Ipswich Town, more than anything. I don't, I don't have any... I'm playing the kids because it's not a gift. It's not a present for them to say here. Go and have a career playing football. I'm playing you because I think you can make do something. That, that's, I've always said that. To get on the side, you have to want to do something. You have to be prepared to to go through it. But it's not. It's not a gift. It's not just because I think you're a nice footballer. I, I'm playing it because I think something might might materialise. So, but I, I don't know anybody anything. That, that's for sure. And when kids make their debut, like Idris the other night, do you then keep an eye on them in training and see how they kind of react to that around the build and also whether they step their efforts up in training? Yeah, yeah, and if I thought they were getting too far ahead, they'll say you'd pull, pull them back down. It's, so this is a, the difficulty with, your, with young players. You don't want them to ever think they've, they've arrived. I just think when a footballer thinks he's arrived, that's, he's in trouble. Then the complacency comes in. So uh, until the day you stop, then you think, OK, I've had a good career or a good job. But never every single day you have to be virtually bang at it. And that's, I don't want a culture of, as I said before, Kids are uh, doing well and, and, and coming in and flash cars and things, I, I don't think it's healthy. There must be a real buzz around the 23s and the 18s, not just the players but the coaches, because they are seeing these boys graduate and, mm. and there is going to be opportunities for these lads. Well, we, have, we have to have a plan, it's a, you've asked me that before, of 
if we decide to go that way and, and we can go and spend millions and millions, we have to have a pathway for kids coming through. And but also the kids have to be good enough to come through. There's no point saying, okay, we've got kids everywhere, but a handful might not be good enough to get through. But in this moment, we've got a nucleus of young men who are who are more than holding their own in the team. But and I've got to say that with a lot of uh, caution itself, they need time to develop. So they might have two or three really good games, maybe one or two that, that, that they fall off the pace of it. But as long as everybody understands that that can happen, then uh, as I said before, the future is incredibly strong. Does this mean you might be looking for more experienced players in the summer when it comes to recruitment to, to complement these boys? But they need a little bit of help, I think. Whether that happens, I don't know. <coughs> but the you can't stop their pathways. Why? Why should I go for a loan who's no any better than one of the young ones? One, I'll, I'll save Marcus money probably. Two, go with what you've got here and what you believe in is is a is a kid's pathway to to make a career if they're good enough. Not not if they're not good enough. If they're, if they're good enough, if if a player's there that I think's a hell of a lot better than the young one then absolutely you, you look at that to give the young one time to develop. But if it's not any better, then then uh, you, can't, you can't look at it. Forrest here this weekend, two men you know very well, and Martin yeah. and Roy Keane. If we talk about Martin first, yeah. what was he like to play under? Brilliant. Uh, uh, five years of absolute brilliance up the, up the road. I think it was uh, when he first came in, we needed a manager like him. Because Celtic is, a, is an absolute monster of a club. And you're only as good as your last pass up there, and you, you have to win. Sometimes the jersey's too big for players they can't handle it. And uh, I had five brilliant years up there. Oh, but five, five, a day, I think I did eight years up there. But the time with the gaffer was five years of, of relentless. It was absolutely brilliant. Good players we played with. Great management team in, in the gaffer, Robbo and Wally. European final, which we just fell short. But we, we played in an era where Rangers were really strong as well. Incredibly strong Rangers side. And uh, and there were some really great battles, but a great great manager to plan. What's so good about him as a manager? Do you think? It's just the way I just think the way he came in to the club, and we, as I said, we needed a manager like him, and uh, that sort of type of manager. And, and he was a really good player himself, you know, two two European cups. So it showed he was a hell of a player himself. So uh, it's just about the way it happened at Celtic in that that five year period. It was. It, as I said before, I think the hardest championship I won was my first one, because the ten in a row was hanging over us. But then we won a, won a, won a few under the gaffer and the, some cups and, and the European journey was was fabulous. But uh, it was just a great, great time and a really, really, a really, really good side. Has he stayed in touch? Has he helped you throughout your manager? Great coincidence. You've yeah. been to a number of similar clubs, haven't you? Wickham. Yeah, Man, we, have, I, we, we, we have. We um, have. I, I was. I was a. Uh, I played in a charity match, sadly, for Liam Muller, who, who passed away in the Celtic sled v uh, Manchester United sled, and the gaffer took the team that day, you know, and, uh, yeah, so I saw him in the summertime, you know, which, uh, uh, when, he t when he tells you he's going to call you back within two minutes, it's about four months late and he'll give you a call, you know, <laughs> so uh, he's good at that, but I'm looking forward to seeing him, as I said before, I had a great, a great time on him. And what about Roy Keane, how did that Roy, move to Villa come about, when he joined I, you there? Do you know, I never... I, Obviously, I knew about Roy and, and, and things like that. I played against him. Uh, Dortmund v, v Manchester United. And, uh, and uh, there's just always been that mutual respect of, I think, being really good footballers. And, and I always got on well with him. I never f found him. Uh, some people probably find him. I think he's unfairly um, criticised a lot of things. He's a proper football guy. And we had a lot of fun at Aston Villa as well, you know, behind the the scenes of it. There's a lot of, a lot of good, uh, lot of good moments, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them. We still keep in contact as well, so uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the two of them. As I said, there was two, two good guys. Steve Guppy, who I played with at Celtic as well, I think at Forest as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. It's a big call to bring him in at Villa. Big personality. A lot of managers wouldn't have done that. They might have been threatened by him, either his personality yeah. or he might nick your job, that kind of thing. No, I never, never felt that one, one iota. I don't. Uh, uh, just to let you know, I'd done all right myself in my football career, you yeah. know. So uh, <laughs> uh, that was never, never the case. I, uh, we at all, we we got on really well, and uh, I said really good moments. A real football man, yes, really real football guy. And uh, 
it has has got a real sense of humour. Did you argue much? Did you always ultimately get your way? No, I mean, of course, I'm the manager, absolutely. Roy will tell you the same. The manager always gets the, the final say. He always is the one that has the final final say. We go on well as guys, on and off the pitch was, was great. So, uh, see, I'm looking forward to seeing him. And, uh, and, and whatever happens in Saturday, we'll, we'll have a chat after the game. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Looking from the outside, Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane's contrasting personalities there. But knowing them both, can you see how they've worked together so well over the years? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me that uh, one I've played under, one one I, it's, it's worked with me, and and they played against and things like that. So uh, I, I think everybody outside of us probably has major questions, but for me it's just normal. It's just normal guys that's got a job to try and do for each team. As I said before, I'm looking forward to seeing them. Do you, do you need that sometimes? Different personalities, different approaches. To Coaching team that must help having, having yeah. different attributes. Well, the staff here at the minute, we're, we're not all the same. We, we have matters of opinion and, and bounce things off each other, and ultimately, the manager has to make the, the choice of what's what's happening. And uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a healthy thing. And Roy, obviously, a former Ipswich manager. Did you mm. speak to him about that when you were together at Villa? Or? This, this no, I, I, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. But we spoke about loads of things, you know, not not just uh, what happened in his past career or or anything like that. You know, we spoke. It's like anything when you retire, you 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 have little moments where you think, I I remember that time where I was here or there or whatever. And uh, I think I think he enjoyed his time down here. I think it was, was it his first job, was it? Sunderland first. Sunderland first, and yeah. I think he, I think he enjoyed his time. Time down here, you know. Think you could go back into club management again? <coughs> yeah, I, I've got no, no fears on that. I think Roy's personality, he could do it. No, no, no. He's done it. He's not. He's not an obvious at it. He's a top, top player. He's done well. He's got some Sunderland promoting things like that. So he's, he's, he's not an obvious. He knows. He knows again. Bigger picture for it. Switch two, two results last night that made the job that, that little bit harder. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's always hard. But uh, listen, we, there's no point in looking at anybody else. If we can go in this, if we can keep the form we're going in now, and we do start to pull people into it, and if we can get a few wins under our belt, and they and, and make a a fist of it, then let's see what happens. That's why I say it's never over until somebody says it's mathematically over, because we're playing well enough to win. But we have to just finish our chances that we're creating. You said on Tuesday that maybe someone written you off. Mm. A little prematurely. Do, do you truly believe you can keep it switching the championship? Until somebody tells me, absolutely, absolutely. Anything can happen in football. It's, it's, it's the most unpredictable game ever. And all you need to do is go on a little run of it. It's going to be unbelievably tough to, to do it. But we're playing well. Different if we're sitting here thinking, we're not playing well, we're not, not creating, we're not. The crowd are against us. It's the total flip side. The crowd are right behind us. And as I say, there's no normal situation where you're getting that level of support, they're right with you, we're playing well, and we're creating chances, we just need to take them with it. And I, that's, that's probably been the, the downside of the whole season, really, not taking chances. In terms of this illness bug, that seems to have been mm. a couple of months now, it's, yeah, it has, it's yeah. been gripping, how, how on earth do you get rid of that? Because it seems to, yeah. is there anything you can do to try and just get that out of the training room? Well, we had, the, we had it cleaned the other day, we, we had to put it, and shut it down really, and, Get it cleaned, but you you have the build, the building's not big enough to hold every age group. It's just, it's not big enough, but that's the way it's that's the way it is. And you've so many. I want to see some bugs going around. Some people've had it twice, let alone once. So it's a situation I've not really encountered where there's been that many of it, lasting for a few months. So um, and one of one or one or two lads have had it. Not just once, but they've had a couple of times. Sounds like you've seen the last of it. Though. It certainly sounds like it's cleared up nicely. I thought that the other week until Matty Pennington pulled me and because um, he put the jinx on at him. So <laughs> he asked me last week, and no, I only says I went no, and, I, and then on Friday morning I woke up and then I found out Pennington and Downs were were struggling with it. Exactly. And I was going to ask you about a few players that have come into your side that we've not seen for a while. You must be pleased with how Toto did on, on mm. Tuesday evenings. 
every time I've, I've told us, and I, I, he's never really let us down. Pennington has been outstanding uh, with it. Toto coming in, uh, he's never let us down. I thought he had a really good game the other night uh, with it. I said before, you you might not see the best of the, a lot of the guys until the second season. But Toto, I, I know exactly when I when I play Toto, I, I've got a rough idea what I'm going to get. He could be a real asset. He played 58 games. Yeah. For a team that, that made two Wembley finals. And yeah. Third in League One. Toto's for me getting better. He's probably had to adjust playing a like, little bit differently from 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 what he's done before, but he's definitely getting better and a good kid, a really good kid. Um, Jordan Spence, uh, Brennan touched on just now. Has he, has he got a future here? It's, it's awfully tough for him to earn a new deal if he's, he's not playing. That's the nature of the game. Jordan was in the side. He'd had, obviously he'd run at it. We decided to change it and, and try to get back inside because Bree's been doing well. Josh Emanuel's been doing doing well. Had, had a decent game against Bristol City. If anything, we moved, moved over. He's been he's been excellent for us in any position. Matt has played. He's been excellent. So, so it's been tough on that. But you have to you have to keep knocking at the door and see if see if that chance comes. Ask another right back as well, Barry Cotter. Ipswich hasn't played for Ipswich for, for nearly a year, but was making good progress. He's called up for Ireland under 21 duty. Is he someone that you've you've seen anything from? Barry's done all right. They said before it's. Uh, to get in the side, you, you have to really get more, really. I think you have to be really on the bottom. I think, as I said, Bree, is he behind Bree? Yeah, is he behind Emmanuel? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Behind Spence? Yep. Yeah. So he's, he's down there, but there's no set given. You have to just keep working hard, and when your chance comes, you've got to impress me and take it. It's, uh, as I said before, it's not a gift. You have to earn the right to, to get a game. Simon Dawkins as well, uh, limited mm. minutes for him, but he's shown a little something in, yeah. in each of his two substitute appearances. Yeah, he has. He, I thought he'd done well against West Brom yeah. uh, when he came on. So uh, it's been hard for him because obviously Judge has come in and been excellent for us. Guion Edwards is playing really well as well at this minute in time. So uh, it's been hard for Simon, but uh, West Brom game, I thought he'd done well. And on Alan Judge, he, he said the other night that the option in his contracts in the club's favour. Mm. Is it as simple as simply taking that option? Or is there a scenario where Alan actually might want a, a longer deal than just a, just a 12 run? I know they're talking. I know, uh, I think Marcus and, and Judge's agents talking away there, so uh, I've left it with them. They know my feelings on it. And he's been he's been absolutely brilliant for us since he's, since he's come in. I guess he's, just, he's looking for a wee goal to kickstart him on that side, but his level of performances has been extremely high. He's clearly got goals in him, just mm. as fun as you. That's it, that's it, because he's, he's, uh, he's causing teams a hell of a lot of problems, that's for sure. That's great. Am I right? Yeah, this was after that the other night. Are we going to see him again? Or? Uh, do you know, there's a walking about there, do you know what I'm saying? I knew you could say that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't uh, know, yeah. because your situation is... <coughs> no, yeah, you know, you know, watch your game. Who did I leave out the other night? Who did I leave? Um, I forget who's going to play that five changes. Uh, okay, go, name them. <laughs> um, Teddy was one. Yeah. Uh, why did I leave Bishop at? Well, because he's been playing so many games. Right, go on. Um, so it's a similar situation with Jonas, is it? Yeah, go on, no, nah, name me the players that left out. <laughs> name, name me the players. Um, okay, I'm trying to remember who was in the team for the previous game. Um, I think it was Mark. You've observations there, I knew. Alright? Scus was left out. 32, 33 years of age, yeah, yeah, yeah. started the Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Bishop, long term injuries been having. Jackson comes in for Aquino, yeah, yeah, yeah. alright, with that. Jonas, we need to freshen up as well with, with, with Toto, which is fine. Out of contract. Yeah. Alright, and Josh, Bree is a lone player in this moment. I had to see Josh to see if he could play. Freshen up and give his legs. Mm. That's why that. So, yeah. so all the players, it's not just about Jonas, no playing. I gave I gave other lads a, a break through reasons for injury or through little other things. So that's that's the reason. So it's not a case that you know, it's just left out because of the situation. No, well, no. We will probably see him again. Um, in terms of other players that missed, missed out the other night in Paynton, you said is he is he on the bench? Paynton. Yeah. Yeah. He, Matty trained this morning, uh, so we we'll see how he how he does tomorrow. Again, he that he the sickness 
sink this bug. Uh, James Collins. He's small. See how he is. He's not done too much, James. So this this one might be a little bit early for him. But I think the national break, I think, will help him. But at least he's back training. And Flynn, he was he, uh, he's. Um, I think he was still feeling a little bit this morning, but getting getting better. Okay, same as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Dino was injured. Uh, sorry, out. Uh, he felt better this morning, so uh, he trained. Again, we'll see how he he has tomorrow. Yeah, little little strain, a um, little problem with his knee, but he trained this morning, and, and then hopefully he's okay. And in terms of long ones, you mentioned Emir, um, Tom, any, any progress? With no, no, Tom, Tom's, listen, Tom's, he's doing well, that kid, but he's, he's, he's still a long way, he's not even trained with us, that's a, that's a, that's a long way away. And uh, we've talked a lot about Roy coming back, but uh, <coughs> on, on, the, on the pitch, Darren Murphy was a, a big player mm. for a number of years, he's, he's really shown in his latter years, what a top striker he is in the championship, isn't he? Yeah, th was he 37? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah and still going, which is great. Test him with that. I know, I know he done well, done well here but, when he was here, but I don't know the lad himself at all, but I know he's had a good career. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Lovely. All right. See you later,